Keith Doubles. Chafed elbows is what you get after a night down at the docks, if you know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. Chafed elbows is uh, a movie, I guess. Once upon a time, there was a prince named Robert Downey Sr. Yes, the father of the singing detective himself, Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Sr.'s 1966 film, Chafed Elbows, is complete unhinged madness. Let me just read the plot for you from... Letterboxd. Uh, a day in the life of a young Manhattanite who is in love with his mother gives birth to $1,890 from his hip and kills indiscriminately. Okay, that's no help. And that's as clear and concise a plot description as you're going to get because everything that happens in this movie is indiscriminate and seems to just be there for Downey's own personal amusement. I think Finnegan's Wake was easier to follow than this movie. Needless to say, this movie firmly takes place in Bonkersville. Population, three or four, because there's about three or four actors playing every part in this movie. I only noticed about halfway through that Downey's wife, Elsie Downey, plays like a dozen different women in this movie. She walked so that men could run away from the movie theater playing the movie, men. You know, especially nowadays, movies are really made by committee. There's always someone there to go, well, we can't do that, or, well, that's going to make that character unlikable, or, shouldn't the union know about this? With this movie, there wasn't even a person there to say, why the hell not? There was just straight up no one there. It was just Robert Downey and whatever he felt like doing at the moment to bemuse his audience and for no other reason other than to confuse everyone. This movie is low budget and I am a thousand percent sure that probably every single shot in this movie was just stolen as they say recorded without a permit in fact the New York Police Department is personally thanked for trying to disrupt the filming of this movie and perhaps this movie was a little bit influenced by the classic mostly still photographed short La Jutie but this feels almost like it falls more in the region of Tom Goes to the Mayor. And I think this plays up the movie's more cartoony aspects, similar to how you can kind of get away with a certain type of humor in a cartoon that you wouldn't be able to in a live action sitcom. But that also opens up this movie for a more visual driven style of humor, which I think is something that's sorely lacking from a lot of modern comedies that rely too much on just crude dialogue. Although I'll tell you, this is one lewd, rude, and crude dude of a movie. So ultimately, this is a movie that I can't say I out and out loved. I would put it like just below a really solid positive review. But I gotta say, the movie is just so DIY and in your face and low budget and doesn't give a damn what you think. But this is also one of those cases where its greatest strength is its greatest weakness at the same time. It's very firmly placed in that mid-60s DIY feeling so I could see how this could be overbearing to some people even though the movie is like just barely over an hour which is really as long as it needs to be but this movie definitely feels like it's a non-cerebral antidote to the other underground films that were happening at the time like Stan Brackage and the Andy Warhol universe and Kenneth Anger and stuff like that. So all in all, the mileage that you get out of this movie really just depends on how much you like your movies with brashness and being confounded with absurdity. If there's any truly serious social satire going on here, I think it either doesn't land or just plainly just went over my head. But I still enjoyed this movie for what it was. Uh, if you like movies that are wacky DIY, absurdist mid-60s to late-60s movies, I would say check out Putney Swope, which was another Robert Downey Sr. movie. I would say check out David Holtzman's Diary, which was a movie I reviewed on this channel not too terribly long ago. And also Brian De Palma's movie Hi Mom from 1970. I feel very similar about that movie as I do to this one. I'd also like to just mention, in case anyone was wondering, movies are allowed to be overwhelming and messy and incoherent and bloated and full of too many ideas and imperfect. I mean, there's been entire film movements that are at least partially based on that principle alone. 
And also there's certain movies that you're allowed to just kind of put on in the background or watch in parts. There may be some film purists that disagree with me on that, but I think if you go into this movie with that in mind, you'll have a pretty good time. And with that, I'll let you insert your own double entendre in here. Stay sexy.